like to share an idea about how we can actually be well using nutrition and natural methods. So really what I want to say is that we all want to be well, isn't it? And but generally what I found over the last 10 years in my practice, that when somebody comes into a doctor's clinic, what they really want is to be well. They don't really want to be sick, they want to be well. And um, what does it mean to be well? In my opinion, being well means you wake up in the morning and you have energy. You're not tired. You eat food and you digest it well. You don't have a digestive discomfort. You're not bloated. You don't have a headache. You can run a mini marathon. You can actually do everything you want to do. You're actually very vibrant. You enjoy living in your own body. You're not overweight and you don't have a big belly. That's what it means to be well. Do we agree? But what's the current reality today? Are people actually well? You have a headache, you're fatigued, you have joint pains, you have digestive problems, you wake up in the morning and you feel unwell, your nose is stuffed. Now, each and every one of us is either directly affected by one of these conditions or knows somebody close to us who is affected by these conditions. And all you don't want to be in that situation. Now, I would just like to share with you a story about somebody who came into my practice. Um, his name is Michael. And Michael generally typifies, he's on the screens, a kind of person that you may actually see today and understand that this person is not well. He was in his early 40s, working class, and he weighed a whooping 121 kilograms. Stage two hypertension, high cholesterol, very large belly, if you can see it here, fatigued and stressed out. Now, many of you here are younger, and you may say that, of course, Michael has these problems because that's how he looks. But I want to just bring to your attention the problem today. These chronic diseases, I want to talk about two, cancer. The World Health Organization tells us that 50 years ago, only one in 75 people got cancer in their lifetime. Today, if you're a man, you have a 50% chance to get cancer. And if you're a lady, you have a 37% chance to get cancer. My mother is a nurse, I always share this story. She did her nursing in Fort Porto district. She did five years of nursing, and she only saw one case of diabetes in five years. And when she saw that case, she said they had to call the whole hospital because they had only read about diabetes in textbooks. Today, each and every home, every workplace almost has diabetes. So this is a big problem with us today. The other thing is, Many times we think that diabetes and cancer and these problems are reserved for maybe the elderly or immunocompromised, but what we're seeing today is everybody is affected, including young adults and especially young adults and worse still our children. I have actually seen a nine-year-old child who has type 2 diabetes. Type 2 diabetes is what we used to call adult onset diabetes. You could never see this in a child. I've seen many children who have cancer. And the other thing that I'd like to say is it's also important to realize that these problems, especially the chronic diseases, in the early stages, they are asymptomatic. There is no symptom. So you may be sitting here today, you don't have a headache, you don't have a digestive problem, and you think that you're well. But the first five years, there's no symptom. So what we want to realize is that we are not always well if you don't have a symptom. Now, when Michael came to see me, the first thing he asked me is, so why do we have so much of these problems today? What causes the problems? Now, very simply, our lifestyles have changed, our environments have changed. But research is telling us today that the seven leading causes of these problems are poor diet, stressful life, lack of physical activity, allergens and sensitivities, toxins in our lives, and a bit of infections and genetics. Now, if these are the problems that are called, if these are the causes of the problems we have today, then that's where we need to put our focus. Now, conventional medical practice, and you'll forgive me if this is offensive in any way to anybody, we tend to focus on treating people when they're already sick, okay? And we tend to do that using medications. Now, we give drugs because when you come to me, you have a headache and that's your problem. If I give you a drug, your headache goes away. But all I'm doing is treating your symptom, not the cause. And as soon as the medication wears off, the symptom is back. So, doctors tell you, you have to take medication all your life so that these symptoms don't disturb you. But that's not the whole truth. Because you see, the reason why doctors and the medical practitioners use drugs is because in the past, 
antibiotics, which were the most prevalent drugs, actually targeted the cause, which was the bacteria. But the drugs today are not doing that. I want to just share with you a very simple illustration of one of the symptoms we suffer today and which we are not managing right. Hypertension. Hypertension is basically your body's response to increased resistance. This is cholesterol. Cholesterol is a type of fat that comes from animal products. And what cholesterol does, it begins to block your blood vessel. So blood that was passing here now only has this small space to pass through. So what your body does is it increases the pressure here so that blood can continue to reach here. Does that make sense? Yeah. So you go to the doctor and he tells you you have hypertension. Your blood pressure is 140 over 100. And what does he do? He gives you a melodipine or telvas or losartan or something like that to lower your pressure. Now what happens is this stays here, but he has lowered the pressure here. So blood now stops reaching. You see, high blood pressure is your friend. It's your body's adaptive response to blockage of the blood vessel. So what you want to do is rather than get rid of the pressure, you want to get rid of the cause, which is the high cholesterol. So we must have that message very clear. And today, I just want to share with you a few things about how we can actually treat the causes of the problems. But when Michael came to see me, this was his situation. He had been to three doctors. He still had his hypertension. And he had tried so many things and he had not been successful. But then we told Michael that if you really want to be well, you have to earn your health. You're not going to buy your health in the pharmacy or at the doctor. And if you could buy your health, rich people would never be sick. Do you agree with me? So how do you earn your health? Really, it's about making the right choices. And if you see these two slides, I won't ask you which one is healthier, but there are always two choices to make. And one of them leads to hell, one of them leads the other way. Now, why is it that human beings still choose the unhealthy option? Because the consequences of the choices are not seen tomorrow, they're seen 20 years from now, and that seems very far. But if a big python came in right now, I don't think anybody would stay here listening to me. We would all flee, isn't it? Because death is imminent. But the point is, we must be very careful about the choices that we make. Now, Learning your health is exercise, awareness, rest, and nutrition. I'll talk very quickly about the A and the R, because I'll talk about the E and the N. Awareness means if you're here today, you want to know how healthy you are. So just tell by a show of hands, how many of you know how healthy you are? By your own standard. How many know your blood pressure, your blood sugar, your cholesterol levels? How many of you have been to the doctor without being sick? How many ladies have gone for a breast or cervical cancer check? How many men have gone for a prostate cancer check? We want to put that at the top of our priority list and go to the doctor even when we are not sick. Rest is very powerful. Rest is the time that God has put to restore your health. And so everybody wants to get at least seven to eight hours of sleep. I know Ethan is in the house. Ethan Mussolini, I think, and grow rich Napoleon Hill says, don't sleep more than six hours. I think he says, you might be a fool. But I want to challenge you. The Bible says something different in Psalm 127, verse 2. I'll leave you to go and read that. But we talked about exercise with Michael, and we challenged him to commit to exercise. Because people know it's important, but they just don't do it. Isn't it? Why? Too busy. A day has 24 hours. We want 20 minutes of exercise. If you break down your day into 20-minute periods, there are 72 of them. If you cannot get one out of 72 to exercise, it's just not your priority. And you know, as Robert was sharing about how you can learn from your dad, my dad has a big forest, and he was trying to get me to go to his forest. He was trying to leave this inheritance to me. And I just wouldn't go. And I kept telling him all sorts of reasons. I'm busy, I'm that. Until one day he said, you know what? You don't have to come. I'm trying to leave this stuff to you, but you're not interested. And it touched me because I was spending my time doing so many unimportant things. But. Let me help you understand exercise. People complicate exercise. They make you think you have to go to a gym or you need fancy equipment. No. All you need is yourself, a comfortable pair of shoes, and about two by two square meter space. That's it. Exercise is anything that makes your heart rate go up, that makes your breathing labored, and makes you sweat. That's it. So 20 minutes per day will transform your life. People come and say, doctor, what can you give me? Do you have something that can take away my belly or my weight? They're looking for some magic pill, isn't it? <laughs> Exercise is the solution. 
So Michael committed to exercising. What else did we do with Michael? We taught him about nutrition. Nutrition is very much a very, it's a very important subject, but very misunderstood. I'd like to share something. Human beings are primates, and primates means that we have a unique characteristic. By the way, in the primate family, there's chimpanzees, gorillas, and monkeys. Primates see color and they taste sweet. No other animal does that. And do you know why we see color and taste sweet? To attract us to fruits and vegetables. But now, human beings in our wisdom, we made soda, isn't it? <laughs> Brighter, sweeter, you don't even have to chew it. So now, our children have lost the God-given right to be healthy because we no longer take fruits and vegetables. But very quickly, we taught Michael that half of your food must come from fruits and vegetables. Now, we'll see in the next slide what we are taught in school. But you also need healthy carbohydrates, you also need healthy protein. But the, really, the key is half of our food must be fruits and vegetables. Now, many people say, but doctor, that's so hard to achieve. I want to say, Genesis chapter 1, verse 29, on day 6 of the creation, when God made the world, he realized that this creature called man must eat. And I quote, I give you every seed-bearing plant on the face of the whole earth. And every tree that has fruit with seed in it, they will be yours for food. <laughs> Full stop. Next verse, animals eat the same way. Do we still eat like that? No. 90% of a human diet should be plant-based. But we are taught to eat a balanced diet in school, where we are taught to eat carbohydrates, proteins, and fats, and some vitamins and minerals. Can you see that on the right? The chips and the chicken, balanced. But how much is fruits and vegetables? And the one on the right is buffet. The sad news is, um, this is how our plates look like at the end of the meal. <laughs> then parents are like, why so much diabetes? Why so much cancer? Why so much arthritis? Because all the things that make us healthy, we don't want to eat them anymore. So we taught Michael this, and we showed him how to eat. So this is what people should eat like. And look at this meal, more than half of the plate is, is vegetables, okay? And very little carbohydrate-rich foods. Now, many people say, if I eat like this, where will I get protein? Where will I get calcium? Because we want people to realize that you want to eat a plant-based diet. Now, foods you want to eliminate, believe it or not. Number one is soda and sugar. Not produce, eliminate. Secondly, refined carbohydrates. White bread, chapati, samosa, mandazi, cakes, white rice, white kaunga. What shall we eat is the question, isn't it? <laughs> Lots of stuff to eat. We're going to eat vegetables, we're going to eat fruits, we're going to eat legumes, beans, peas, and soya. We're going to eat nuts, we're going to have seeds, we're going to have avocado. We're going to have lots of mushrooms. When it comes to carbohydrates, we're going to have pumpkin and sweet potato. Don't change the food. Eat it the way God made it. Lots of grains. Eat maize on a cob, not kaunga. This is how we should eat. We taught Michael this, and he embraced it. Now, I want you to just imagine having to make such a radical change. We sent him on a two-month journey, as we do for most of our clients, and I'd like to show you what happened to Michael later. But we got Michael eating like our friend, the primates. <laughs> now, I know Michael's story is a bit out of touch with many of us. Some of the juices we shared with Michael, which he drank. Michael's story sometimes seems out of touch, but I want to share a story of someone that you may relate with better. A 28-year-old gentleman who was always asthmatic and who had lots of allergies. And one year after getting married in 2008, began to put on weight. Now, if you've been a small person, you know how nice it is to put on weight and get a bit of a belly. So this is what happened to this gentleman. But what happened also is he began to feel tired more. He woke up in the morning and he was a bit fatigued. His allergies got a bit worse. His digestive system got a bit worse. This led this person to something like Michael. And what happened to this gentleman? This guy had moved from 60 kilos to 80 kilos in about four or five years. And I'm sure that's the story of many of us today. If you're in campus, maybe not yet, but that's where you will be heading. And his mother was happy, his wife was very happy, his mother-in-law was even happier. <laughs> but he changed his diet and things began to change. The first thing he experienced was 
He woke up like three, four days later and was full of energy. His allergies began to decrease. His weight also began to go down. Actually, his weight went down from 80 kilos to about 65 kilos. But two major things happened to him. One is his allergies completely disappeared. And his wife actually testifies that he used to make some very horrible noises every morning with his nose and something when they were congested and now have since left. But his asthma disappeared. And can you imagine somebody being told all his life that asthma cannot leave you? This guy had three asthma pumps, one in the pocket or in his car, one in the office and one at home because asthma is a bad disease. But six years later, this guy has not had one asthma attack. Ladies and gentlemen, this person I'm talking about is actually myself. <laughs> That's me, 2008. It may not seem like I was so big, but I was 78 kilos, looking very nice. And this is me today, 64 kilos, advocating for people to eat like primates. But what happened to Michael? Let's see what happened to Michael two months later. Michael, the magic started happening. So this is Michael two months later. We were celebrating his results, okay? This is Michael, a real champion. 121 kilos, 106 kilos. Hypertension disappeared, his belly was disappearing, restored his life. Now this is a story that I've seen with so many people. I've seen people whose diabetes has actually gotten much better, hypertension reversed, arthritis gotten better, the body is an amazing self-healing machine. The unfortunate part is nobody ever tells us this. What they tell us is when you're sick, go to the doctor. Now, I'm not saying doctors are bad. We need doctors. But you need doctors for acute illnesses. Malaria, an accident, something that comes suddenly. If you have a chronic problem, you want to look into yourself. The body is just waiting to heal you, but you must make the right choices. And you must earn it. It won't come by chance. And if you make the wrong choice, you will get disease. I always share that there's a law of gravity. Whether you know the law of gravity or not, whether you believe in it or not, if I drop this pointer, it falls, isn't it? If someone throws you off a building, you drop to the ground, whether you're a good person or not. The same thing with our health. If you don't take care of your body, your body will get sick. But once you start to take care of your body, your body will respond. Ladies and gentlemen, while people like us can show you where to go, only you can take the next step. As I come to my conclusion, I believe, ladies and gentlemen, that being well through natural medicine and nutrition is really an idea worth sharing. Thank you very much.